This is Jonah. Jonah's a prophet. You, you, don't, you don't know what a prophet is? Oh, well, um, a, a, a prophet is a messenger, but he carries messengers for God. Now, Jonah lived in the land of Israel 2,800 years ago, and he carried messengers from God to the Jewish people. One day God called him and said to him, Jonah, I want you to take a message for me to a certain city, and I want you to warn them that it has been pointed out to me that this is a very wicked city, and if they don't change their ways, I will have to judge them. Okay, says Jonah, what city is it? It's the city of Nineveh in Assyria, said God. Off you go. Hmm, thought Jonah. Nineveh. Now Nineveh was the capital of Assyria, and it was indeed a very wicked city. And Assyria was sending out their armies to all the countries around, one by one, and beating them up and taking them over. And the armies of Assyria were getting closer and closer to the land of Israel. Oh, thought Jonah. But if I go and I give the message that God has given me, and the people hear it, then God won't be angry with them if they change their minds. And if he's not angry with them, he won't destroy them. Hmm, I know what I'll do. If I take the message God's given me, and instead of going to Nineveh, I go the other way, and God doesn't notice, then God will think I've taken the message there, and he'll think that the people in Nineveh haven't repented, and he'll destroy them, and he'll save my country. That's a good idea. So, Jonah packed his bags and headed down to the coast of the Mediterranean Sea to a town called Joppa. And there he found a ship going to the furthest place away he'd ever heard of, a city called Tarshish, which was thousands of miles away from Nineveh. And he got onto the ship, he paid his money, and he went and he hid down in the hold, hoping God wouldn't notice him. And he started to sail away. But of course, God wasn't fooled. He knew exactly what Jonah was doing, and he knew where Jonah was trying to go. So when the ship was out at sea, God sent a great wind, and he made the waves roll high, and a storm hit. And the water was coming over the edge of the ship, and the sailors were panicking, and their sail was being torn to pieces, and they ended up having to throw all the goods on the ship over the side to try to lighten the load, but it wasn't any good and the ship was taken on more and more water. And so they started to pray to their own gods. You, you see, each country had their, their own god, and they would pray to them, but it didn't do any good. And none of them was being listened to. So the captain went down into the soul hold of the ship, and there he found Jonah, who was asleep, and said to him, Get up! Pray to your god. Maybe he will care about us. Uh, Jonah didn't though because he knew exactly why the storm was there and he knew exactly what was happening. Eventually though the sailors decided there's only one thing we can do. Obviously one of us has angered a god and we need to know which person it was. So they decided to throw lots to find out who it was. So they took straws and then one by one each sailor pulled out a straw. But when Jonah took the straw he had the short one. All the sailors looked at him. What have you done? Who are you? Who is your God? Jonah looked a bit sheepish. I'm a Jew. My God is the God who created the sky and the sea and the land. And I'm trying to run away from him. You're doing what? said the sailors. How stupid are you? Do you think you can run away from a God who created the sky and the sea and the lands? Tell us, what have we got to do to save ourselves? There's only one thing you do can do, said Jonah. You need to throw me over the side of the ship. When you do, you will be saved. But the sailors were horrified. Well, we can't do that. So they decided to get the oars and to try to row. And they rowed as hard as they could to get back to the land through the storm. But they, they couldn't do it. So the sailors reluctantly picked up Jonah and they looked up to heaven and they said, please God of Jonah, forgive us. 
for what we're going to do. And so they picked him up and they threw him over the side into the storm and with an enormous splash he disappeared beneath the waves. And as soon as he had, the wind stopped, the waves died down and there was a perfect calm. And the sailors knew who was gone then. Jonah, as he sunk beneath the waves, he looked up and thought, well, at least I don't have to take the message to Nineveh now. But God hadn't finished with Jonah. And God organised a very, very, very large fish to come and swallow him. And he sailed away into the dark. Three days later, Jonah found he was alive, but still in the belly of the fish. And he knew he was in trouble, and he knew he was deep under the sea, and he knew that no one could hear him apart from God. He started to think of his home. He started to think of the temple of God, and he started to remember how God loved him he prayed and he asked for help and so God asked the fish nicely and the fish sailed to the land and went and Jonah ended up on the beach alive and then God spoke to him Jonah yes Lord Jonah I want you to take the message to the city of Nineveh and tell them exactly what I have told you. So Jonah got up from the sea, just as he was, and started to walk the 800 miles all the way from the Mediterranean Sea, all the way to Nineveh. Nineveh, one of the greatest cities in the world the most powerful, the strongest. It would take you three days just to walk around Nineveh. Jonah went into the city and he walked up to the people and he pointed at them. In 40 days, said Jonah, this city will be overturned. And then he walked off and found another group and said the same thing. He didn't tell them about God he didn't tell them what they'd done wrong. He didn't tell them anything like that. He just told them exactly what God had told him to say. And he wasn't going to tell them anything more because he still didn't want them to change their mind and become good. And as he went around, something very strange happened. That the people started listening to him. And they started to get worried. And rumours got back to the king. Ah, your majesty. And the king was worried. In fact, so worried he gave orders to all his people. I want you, he said, to pray to this new god, who, whoever he is, and ask that he forgive us. And I want you to stop eating. That's called fasting. While you pray. And I want you to take off your wonderful robes and apparel. Even the king did. And to put on sackcloth. Sackcloth's a type of itchy clothing. And to put ashes on your head. And to pray to God. And hopefully he will change his mind. And the whole city prayed. Even the animals were covered with sackcloth. And God looked down and he saw this. And God smiled and said, yes, I can forgive them. But Jonah wasn't happy. He didn't want the city to be saved. He wanted it to be destroyed so that his own people would be protected from them. He decided, if I don't preach any more, then maybe they'll change their mind. So he went out after just one day and he went to a hill overlooking the city from a distance. It was a hot, dry, bare place. And he sat there and God came to him there and said, Jonah, are you right to be so angry? Yes, I am, said Jonah. I don't want to do this anymore. 
Now God decided he wanted to teach Jonah why he was doing it. So overnight, God caused a plant to grow up near Jonah. And it was a lovely shady plant. And when Jonah saw it, he loved it because it was such a hot place he had chosen. And he sat under the plant and he watched the city from there. But overnight, God sent a worm into the plant and it slowly munched its way through it. And when Jonah woke up in the morning and he looked, his plant had shriveled up and there was no life left in it. And God came to Jonah. Jonah, are you right to be so angry? Yes, I am, said Jonah. I want to die, I'm so angry. Jonah, said God, why are you angry about this plant? You didn't make it. It grew up overnight, it died overnight. Why are you so angry about the plant? I liked that plant, said Jonah. I love that plant, said Jonah. Jonah, take a look at the city. The city full of people that I made. Yes, it's an evil city, but they're people I made. Did you know there's 120,000 children in that city, Jonah? What about all the animals? Shouldn't I care about them? When Jesus was here on earth, he tried to teach his disciples the same lesson. He told them that they should love their enemies. But the Bible says that God so loved this world that he sent his own son to die for us. And in the same way that Jonah spent three days in the fish, Jesus spent three days in the grave. And he came out with a message for this world. A message that God loves us, but that he doesn't love the way we behave. He doesn't love the things we do. And that he wants us to change and that he's given us a chance. Jesus was the son of God, who was willing to give everything to save us. That is the type of God we serve. One who is willing to forgive, who is willing to help, to heal, is willing to have us change and come back to him, accept his son as Lord and saviour of our lives and start anew with him.